Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. What you are looking at is my new Pandora Hackintosh build. This video will show you the parts that I used in this build, why I picked them, and my overall impressions of building my very first Hackintosh. Well, let's start off with the beautiful case. It is the BitPhoenix Pandora MATX case. I got this case at around 150 Canadian dollars, and I got it for two reasons. First, it looks really good. The aesthetics of this case is very similar to a MacBook Pro, and the brushed aluminum finish really gives an Apple vibe to the entire build. Second, the front panel of this case has a customizable LCD screen and I thought it would be jaw-dropping to have an Apple logo right at the front of this case. Moving on to the inside, this Hackintosh is running an i7 4790K that I got for $380. A bit cheaper than retail because I know somebody that knows somebody and that's how we got it at that price. Uh, but basically this i7 4790K is a quad-core CPU with eight total threads. It's clocked at 4.0 gigahertz that boosts to 4.4 gigahertz under load. And keeping that CPU nice and cool is the Corsair H105 all-in-one water cooler. The reason I got the H105 and not an I model like H100i or H105i is because the user control features won't be compatible with Macintosh operating systems. I got this H105 for $110 on Craigslist, and yeah, I know some of you may be thinking the second-hand market isn't your thing, but for some parts I will buy from Craigslist, some parts I won't. This one proved to be a good purchase. The motherboard is a Gigabyte Z97M D3H that I purchased for $159. I chose Gigabyte because their boards are said to be the most compatible with Hackintosh builds. This board is a basic board that allows for some basic overclocking, uh, but if I could ever go back and change anything, I would have chosen a motherboard with built-in Wi-Fi connectivity. At the bottom here, we have a Samsung Evo 850 500GB SSD. I picked Samsung because I thought it would be hilarious to have Samsung represent itself in this build and also with the side panel on the SSD has a beautiful minimalistic look showcasing its brand. For graphics card I picked the Gigabyte GTX 970 Mini ITX Overclock. I picked this card because I didn't want the system to draw too much power. I wanted the system to be a quiet computer, but also a powerful one. The GTX 970 Mini ITX Overclock gives you the best of both worlds. Also, if this Hackintosh build didn't work for me, I would have put this card into my other ITX build. This card costed about $440, almost 10 to 20% cheaper than other GTX 970 cards. As for RAM, we have the 16 gigabytes of Crucial Ballistics Tactical. They are clocked at 1600 megahertz CL8 with timings of 8, 8, 8, 24. I picked the Crucial Ballistics because not only do they look great, but they also have the potential to overclock very well to 1866 megahertz or even 2133 megahertz. And lastly, powering all these components, we have the Corsair CX600M. This power supply is a semi-modular unit that has an efficiency of 80 plus bronze. I'm comfortable at 600 watts with this system because the GPU we're using isn't a monster energy drainer. With the hardware overall, I am absolutely floored with how beautiful this system is. It's sleek, it's minimalistic, and everything about it screams Apple, but it's not perfect. BitPhoenix just can't seem to get all their cases right, and the Pandora case I got has a slight bulge on the side. 
I tried everything I could to get the side to sit flush with the chassis, but it just isn't going to work. I'm not that upset however, because when the computer is on your desk or on the floor, the side blemish is not noticeable at all. So on to the operating software. Trust me, I thought this would be an easy process with all the tutorials and Hackintosh guides on the internet, but no. It took me a few hours to troubleshoot what was wrong, try new solutions, and I have to admit there was definitely some frustration involved. But fortunately, after using specific boot flags, I was able to get it up and running. Here are some benchmark numbers while the system was at stock speeds. And here are some benchmark numbers after I overclocked the CPU to 4.6 GHz. All in all, was it worth it? Well, the system cost me $1,800, hours of research and planning, as well as hours of building and troubleshooting. Was it fun? Absolutely. I even got people from my church involved and taught others how to build a computer from scratch. Going to Apple Store and purchasing a 5K iMac or Mac Pro would have costed nearly three to $4,000, so I would say this is definitely worth it. I know my build doesn't come with a 5K monitor, but I don't need one anyways. I would say that building your own Hackintosh or Hack Pro is the best solution if you want to control your own parts, build your own computer, and at the same time use Mac OS X. Thanks for watching. I had a lot of fun building this Hackintosh and I hope you enjoyed it too. Please like this video if you liked it and subscribe for more tech videos.